Welcome to Food Aspire Home and Garden. Today we're making curry chicken spinach. Here are some of the ingredients that I'm showing you in the video. This chicken is a uh, type of thigh meat that works really well and it's really um, quite moist. Um, you do need to leave it in the refrigerator for 24 hours before cooking, so that's where this meal prepping comes into play. I do a lot of meal preps when I do things, um, and all of these ingredients and everything will be also in a cookbook that I will be doing for this um, with this video. So you can see I'm cutting it out of the bag. I usually buy everything in bulk and I stick it in a freezer so that everything is nice and ready to go when I'm ready to mill prep. Um, all of my freezer mills, I also use that um, seal bag that works really, really well. Um, food saver, I think, is what you guys would call it. Um, I shop a lot at Costco or the big box stores um, to save all my meals. You can see that um, right now I'm cutting up all of my chicken breasts and I have it in a Tupperware container. I'm adding in all of my ingredients um, for this meal. Um, there's going to be a lot of curry powder, garlic, um, masala, coriander, um, garlic, salt and olive oil all added in and you're going to mix together with your hands don't be afraid to get in there and get into things a little bit to mix everything up um at this point i started to put the tupperware dish on or the lid on and then i think i forgot the salt so you're going to see that here in just a few moments of time. There's also going to be um, some cashew milk added in. I usually get the big, huge container of it. This one had vanilla in it, but it was the only thing that was available because it is um, during all the virus crap that's going on. So you shake it up really good, let it sit for 24 hours. Um, for the next day, um, I took all of my spinach that I needed to use, which is about a half of a container of a big, huge container of spinach and one onion, tomatoes, and it was a white onion. There are peppers in there. The peppers are a, um, Pueblo red pepper that I get once a year and I stick them in the freezer into the food saver bags and then I just use of course my food processor my food processor comes in very great um, need I really need it it's good handy um, and then after that um, you can just see me processing everything and throwing everything all together. I have a silver or a metal dish off to the side that I'm putting in everything. There's also mint leaves in this too, but I didn't use very many because I don't like the heavy taste of the mint. Um, I like my thing, my uh, chicken curry very spicy, so I probably used about a half of a bag of uh, the club. Pueblo Reds. They're pretty spicy. I left the seeds in there. So if you want, you can take the seeds out, but I don't. keeps mixing mixing all the ingredients up it's a lot of ingredients because I'm making quite a bit because I'm gonna put them in freezer bags and I usually do a meal prep with everything so I work usually four or five days so I'll have four or five containers 
Um, and then I use a oven roaster for my um, cooking a lot of times so that I can throw everything in and then I can go off and do something else. This will need to cook for about four hours in the roaster at 250 degrees. Unfortunately, you couldn't see me throwing in all the ingredients, but basically you want to brown your uh, chicken first and then you want to um, probably crank that heat up to about 350, 400 just to make sure it gets all nice and um, browned. I did just throw the whole entire contents of the liquid that was in the container in there because it's going to all cook anyway, so it's not really going to matter too much. And then after it's browned, I threw in all the veggies that were um, with this, which was the spinach, the onion, and the tomato. And then I added in more silk, probably about like an extra cup or so of the cashew milk. And then I added in two uh, cans of coconut milk. Just the cream, not the uh, liquid part. I always throw the liquid part away. And if you really want to know a good trick of opening up a can of coconut milk, you can actually flip it over on the opposite side, and it really helps it. You can dump out the liquid first, and then you get to the cream. It makes it so, so easy. I did add some extra cloves of garlic to this also, and then I also added extra salt and, of course, garlic to taste. Of course, you don't want to taste it if it's raw. You want to wait until it's, you know, cooked so you don't get some weird salmonella thing. There is the um, coconut milk right there all dumped in. And then I added all the extra ingredients that we used the first day back into the pot to make it all nice and tasty. I probably added a ton more of curry, which was probably about at least a fourth of a cup more of the regular curry powder. Um, there is a little red curry powder in there also to make it taste good. And then put the lid on and just crank it to 250. And then I serve this with rice and a piece of naan bread, which is something that I have made with coconut flour and almond milk to mimic the um, Indian restaurants that I really like. So um, thanks for watching. You can see the end result here. In the video um, click subscribe and like if you like the video sorry about the weird camera angles and all that other stuff I will try to do better next time um, I'm not exactly a camera person I do have a four day five day a week job working as a hygienist so I'm just trying something out new for fun because my coworkers said that um, they loved my food and thought that I should try writing a cookbook. So I will have a cookbook to go along with this video on Amazon and it will be all published with all of the recipes written down that you can get on Amazon. But for now... Um, have a wonderful day and hopefully you find something to aspire your home garden or food.